the Budweiser rocket. Fast? Certainly. Controversial? Without doubt. Supersonic? The jury's still out. Owned by film director Hal Needham, built by hot rod legend Bill Frederick and driven by stuntman Stan Barrett, in December 1979 the Budweiser rocket reportedly went supersonic on Rogers Dry Lake in the US. Arguments over whether the car actually broke the sound barrier continue to this day and have overshadowed many details of the project. The Budweiser rocket was based on Bill Frederick's previous rocket car, the SMI Motivator, which had already been driven to over 600 miles per hour in 1976. Budweiser's sponsorship pledge was specific – break the sound barrier. Despite the project's supersonic ambitions, the design philosophy was simple – the car should have the smallest frontal area and the largest amount of power possible. Designed to fit snugly round driver Stan Barrett, the fuselage was just 20 inches wide and 24 inches high, rising to 39 inches at the top of the cockpit canopy. Overall, the car measured 39 feet 2 inches long and 8 feet 10 inches high at the top of the tail fin. Fully fuelled, it weighed 2.4 tonnes. Thrust was provided by a Romatech V4 hybrid rocket engine, which used hydrogen peroxide to ignite a polymer-based solid fuel, producing 24,000 pounds of thrust. Incredibly, an additional 6,400 pounds was provided by mounting a Sidewinder missile above the main engine, to be fired at 600 miles per hour, to propel the car through the sound barrier. Although the main engine could be shut down by the driver, the Sidewinder was a simple solid rocket motor and once lit would run until its fuel had been used up, around 6 seconds later. With so much power on tap, the Budweiser rocket boasted stunning performance. From a standing start, the car could exceed 700 miles per hour in 16 seconds. The driver experienced acceleration up to 4G, with a further 1G added when the Sidewinder was lit. The Budweiser Rocket's solid aluminium wheels were a feature which has been adopted by all subsequent land speed record challenges. Rubber tyres would have disintegrated at the speeds that the team were aiming for. The Budweiser Rocket was not designed to be serviced and turned round for a second run within one hour, which has always been a requirement of the FIA-sanctioned land speed record. It also became clear during early test runs that the car was incapable of sustaining its peak speed through a measured mile or kilometre course, as its slim fuselage couldn't carry enough fuel, which limited its chances of setting an officially recognised record. Consequently, the team changed its declared goal. Although this would not be an attempt on the land speed record, Stan Barrett would aim to be the first man to break the sound barrier on land. From September 1979, the Budweiser rocket ran 18 times. The first runs at Bonneville used the rocket engine at half power, with hydrogen peroxide used as a monopropellant and without the sidewinder. Nevertheless, the car peaked at 638 miles per hour, but an uneven lake bed surface was blamed for the rear wheels lifting at speed. A move to Rogers Dry Lake at Edwards Air Force Base in California presented a better surface. Speeds were gradually increased over subsequent runs, until early on December the 17th, the team prepared for the highly publicised attempt on the sound barrier. The speed of sound depends on prevailing conditions, including air temperature and pressure. On that morning, the team's Mach 1 target speed was 731.9 miles per hour. A huge TV audience watched Barrett squeeze into the Budweiser rocket's slim fuselage and ready the car for the run, with blasts of steam shooting from the rocket engine as it was warmed up. Finally, the countdown began. So, 
Did the Budweiser rocket break the sound barrier? This question has proved controversial over the last 40 years, with many of the subsequent arguments hinging on the way the car's speed was measured. The United States Air Force used radar to track the vehicle and recorded its speed as 38 miles per hour. Clearly an error, it is thought that the radar locked onto a truck moving in the background during the rocket's run. Data from accelerometers on board the car was analysed instead, and eight hours after the run, the team declared that they had indeed broken the sound barrier, with a peak speed of 739.666 miles per hour, or Mach 1.01. Commentators have taken issue with this method of calculating the speed. By definition, accelerometers measure instantaneous acceleration, and can be unreliable as a means of measuring accumulated speed, particularly in a vehicle that was vibrating like the Budweiser rocket did under power. No data was ever released, and so the claimed speed could not be independently verified. In the days following, the radar data was reportedly corrected by driving a vehicle down the course and taking range measurements, then retrospectively calculating a speed of 734 miles per hour using these measurements, with the other data that the radar had recorded. Subsequently, the United States Air Force issued a carefully worded letter asserting that, within the accuracy of the speed measuring devices used, in their opinion, Mach 1 had been exceeded though they later appeared to backtrack by saying they never intended to give official sanction to test results, nor to give the appearance of expressing an official view as to the speed attained by the test vehicle. Any such opinion was that of individual Air Force personnel, not of the Air Force. The International Hot Rod Association had set up three sets of timing traps which should have given a precise speed. For a sanctioned land speed record attempt, the timed section is either a mile or a kilometre long. For Stan Barrett's unsanctioned attempt on the sound barrier, the time section was just 52.8 feet or 16.1 metres long, one one hundredth of a mile. At the declared speed of 739.666 miles per hour, the Budweiser rocket would have passed through the speed trap in 0.0479 seconds. This leaves very little margin for error, with even the slightest discrepancy making a significant difference in the recorded speed. In the event though, no data was ever presented from the speed traps, and it has been suggested that the car may even have run out of fuel and been slowing before it reached the timing beams. Chuck Yeager, the first man to break the sound barrier in 1947, asserted that the car's rear wheels leaving the ground during the run proved that supersonic shock waves were present. In other words, that the Budweiser rocket was travelling at a speed beyond the sound barrier. This sounds plausible, and yet aerodynamicists have since pointed to subsonic and transonic aerodynamic effects having similar lifting characteristics on other land speed record vehicles below Mach 1. For example, Craig Breedlove's 600 miles per hour Spirit of America Sonic 1. Skeptical observers pointed out at the time that the anticipated sonic boom was not heard. Spectators close to the course might not have heard a sonic boom over the noise of the rocket motor and the sidewinder firing. However, in 1997, Thrust SSC demonstrated that the sonic boom from a land vehicle going supersonic can be heard some distance away, and yet there's no evidence of a sonic boom on the 1979 film. For his part, Stan Barrett claims to have felt violent buffeting as the car approached its peak speed before things smoothed out, similar to the observations of test pilots such as Chuck Yeager as they approached the sound barrier. Barrett has never been in any doubt. He went supersonic. There can be no argument that Stan Barrett's bid to break the sound barrier in the Budweiser rocket was a brave and spectacular event, and it is unfair to dismiss it purely as a publicity stunt. But 40 years on, the question still remains. Did he? Or didn't he? If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and check out my channel for more. Until next time.